Okay, so we got our initial scene right here. Remember, I always have my keys and the mouse, everything that I'm pressing down here. So if I press, you're going to see that happening down here. So um, if you uh, feel like something, it's not kind of working the way uh, you think it should, you can just go back and check out which of the keys I've been pressing. Okay, so let's start by getting rid of the light and the camera. We're not going to use those. And I'm going to hit N key to get rid of this panel right here so we have a more clean uh, viewport to work on. So one of the most important things when you're modeling is that you want to actually have some references. This is the say, same for uh, making 2D artwork. We, When you have references, uh, it really helps spark your creativity as well as, as maintain uh, a guided, uh, a, you know, like a guided north where you can actually focus on a specific outcome. So what we're going to do here and um, in you, you have a notepad key, uh, keys, right? There's a notepad is the, the one on the, on the right side of the keyboard that has all the numbers, has a plus sign and all that. Uh, if you can't use it, there's one key that says non lock that's going to turn it on and off in case it's not working. In this case, just keep it on. I'm going to press the one notepad one key. That's going to bring this to one of the uh, points of view that is flat on the frontal uh, of the of the view. So when we're going to press that notepad one, it's going to set us up on the flat frontal surface. Next, we're going to hit the G key and G key and press the Z key. I'm sorry. No. So you have to select it. You can click and drag or just click on the objects, then press the G key, Z, the Z key and move it with your mouse a little bit up. Okay, so what we did is basically we grabbed this tool right here, move, and move the cube up. You can do that by pressing the G key. When you have something selected, you press the G key, you can grab it and move it around. G for grab. Else, you can always grab here your tools and use these to move around, as well as your rotation tool and your scale tool okay then you have this uh, this is like a multi-tool where it has the rotation scale and location tool okay let's go back to our select box tool and now that we have our box right there um, i want to hold shift and press the a key that's going to bring up our add menu hold shift and press the a key that's going to bring your your add menu and in this menu we're going to be able to add different shapes it's called mesh you can add curves surfaces and a bunch of other things that we're going to use later on but for now we're going to go into this one right here it says image and we're going to add a reference image just click on it and you're going to have this pop up so i'm going to have you should have a uh, an image that I sent you up chest and you need to go find it and let's go find it uh, somewhere around here there we go Okay, so here we found it. So let's grab the chest image that you should have, find it and just load the reference up. And you're gonna see it's gonna pop up right here in the center. So I want you to click on it, press the G key, and you wanna move it to the side, somewhere near the box, so you can keep an eye on it. You can always grab your tool here, and it, with this uh, little green box, you can move it around. Okay, so we want to have it next to it, next to us. See that right there? Okay, perfect. So the next thing I want you to do is just have your your wrap uh, tool there and just pull it back. 
to pull it back because I, we want it to be on a place that is not interfering with your bots, but you can, you know, always reference to it. So I want to do, I want to duplicate this image as well. And what we're going to do is hold shift and press the D key. Now, don't click your mouse, just hold shift and press the D key. And then you're going to move, you're going to see that it got duplicated. So now that you have it, you don't have to click anything. You, you have it grabbed. I want you to press the X key. That's going to align it on the X axis. The X axis is the one that goes across the screen. So it's going to move only across the screen and that's going to be perfect for us. So move it onto the other side. Now I want you to, we want to rotate this. So uh, right now, if we press the notepad one, we see the front part. But if we press notepad, notepad three, we're on the side of the book, the cube, and we can't see the image. That's why we duplicated the other one. Okay. So now that you have that set up right there. so. When I grab it, click on it, I want you to press the R key, and then I want you to type nine zero. Okay, that flipped it. You see that that that, that just flipped it ninety degrees, and you can see the the rotation up here. You see it says road, uh, and and inside parentheses equals 90 degrees and that's great but that's not how we want it to rotate right okay so let's hit escape that's gonna reset back to it and then press the r key again so we want it to rotate and the z axis you see this right here it gives you your axes so we want it to rotate within the middle so it rotates on itself so we press the r key the Z key, and you see that straight line that crosses on a, right in the middle. Let's now type nine and zero. And there you go. It flipped 90 degrees and we have it on the side. So if we press the numpad three, we can see our chest right there on the side. And we press numpad one, we can see it right there on the front. Perfect. Awesome. So what do we do to grab our image or our objects what key do we press to grab our object exactly we click on it and we press the g key we can move it or we can go here and grab our tool for move then let's move it forward a little bit so it's not conflicting with the other one okay so now that we have let's move it a little bit more There we go. Just it's outside of the view, just like this one. So now that we have our references, we can dive in into making our chest. Okay. So one of the things that we want to uh, understand about modeling anything is that everything is about shapes. So if we grab, take in account this image right here, what shapes do you see currently? I currently see. multiple rectangles. I can see rectangle down here, up here, and they're like kind of a box, but we can also see a circle here or half a circle. We can see half a circle here, right? We can see almost like a triangle kind of uh, uh, shape here and so on. We got a diamond here. So what you want to try to find is all these shapes. You really want to grab all these shapes and understand that because that those are the shapes that we're going to try to model. So bear with me. This is about practice. If you can't get it up the first try, believe me, I did not get it for the, for the first 20 or 30 tries. It's not a problem. Just, just go back, watch the video and try to replicate what we're doing here. Okay. It's, just, it's, it's all about practice. All right. So now let's go back to our cube here. And so we have 
uh, I would say like a large rectangle on it. And so let's go to our frontal view and I'm going to press the S key or scale. And I want to scale it on the red line, right? Across. And that's the X axis. So say if I press X and pull the mouse, you're going to be able to extend it, make it shorter. You can send it. Okay. You can also go here and grab your scale tool. And you see the red line? That's where you want to scale it. So you can just pull right there. Perfect. So we have a box type thing, type object here for our chest. And so I have reference here and I'm thinking, okay, so I kind of like this one. It's kind of common, very nice. And the, the wood texture is pretty nifty. Uh, I like the steel one. It's pretty cool as well. So I'm, I'm actually going to do and go ahead uh, uh, with this one. I feel like it's like uh, the classic style and I kind of like it. So as you can see, we are doing stylized design. Stylized means it's not realistic in the sense that it's perfectly like real life. It has that cartoony feel. Things are bigger, bolder, and they have more exaggerated features. So let's go to our tab. Which tab is the one that allows us to modify the mesh? You got it. It's modeling. Perfect. So now let's hit our let's hit our modeling tab. Our, all the tools are gonna change. We're gonna hit our notepad one. And now let's go here and toggle X-ray. So X-ray is gonna allow us to see through the box. If you press the A key, you can select everything. If you click on outside, you can deselect everything. If you click one of these guys and click outside, you deselect it. If you click one of those, you can hold Alt and A and it'll des deselect everything. Okay. So here's one thing. Let's click, get this back outside of top uh, X-ray. And I I'm going to try to go to my frontal view and select those corners on top. If I move, around and uh in case you haven't noticed uh, you move by holding the middle wheel the middle mouse wheel you you hold it and you can just move around okay uh and then hold shift down and hold your and and hold shift and hold your middle mouse wheel to pan around okay just just notice it down here. So middle mouse wheel, I can move around, hold mouse, hold the uh, shift and hold middle and you can pan around. So when I did this, I tried to grab both of these guys, but I, I wasn't able to. That is because we are on a solid view. If I go here and toggle my x-ray and I try to do that again, you see I'll grab both of them. Because now it's going across, I can grab all of the other side. So that's one of the good things about having this X-ray ability right here. We can grab all everything. Whereas if we don't have that and I try to do this, I will just grab whatever it's seen. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now let's go back to X-ray because I want to hold these guys on the bottom and then, and you see like the chests are kind of, I like this one, like it's kind of going a little bit in. So I'm going to press the S key and then the X key to scale down a little bit. Boom. And now we have that, but I want to do it from the side also. So let's go to our notepad three and we can see it from the side to get and then we're just gonna grab everything. Just grab everything we can see. We have everything down there grabbed. Go on number three and let's press S and then we wanna scale it on the Y axis which is the green one. Then press the Y key and just scale it down a little bit. 
Nice. So now we have that kind of cool um, stylized shape that is from these types of chest. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the chest get out of, tumble that out. We're going to make the chest have that in the inside part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we have different options here. One is called the vertices. The other one is the edges and the other one is the faces. We can also toggle these guys by pressing, by grabbing, by pressing the, I'm sorry, pressing the number one, number two, or number three on your keyboard. Number one is vertices, number two is your edges, number three is your faces. So we're going to grab number three, this one right here, our faces, and we are going to go to our tools and look for this tool called insert faces. Insert faces means that it's going to bring in an extra face that is going to be inserted on, on that face that we already had. You see, that's pretty cool. You can also, if you don't, if you want to know the shortcut, you can press the I for insert and it'll do the same thing. Slowly put it back in. Great. Now, I feel like this is not symmetrical. I feel like these edges are too, uh, too far apart compared to these ones. So what we're going to do is uh, we already have this space selected. Let's call, let's go to our scale tool and let's make it smaller on the Y axis. Boom. There. Awesome sauce. And you saw that? Perfect. So now let's get our select box. And what we're going to do now is we're going to grab this extrude region. You remember the key for that one? It's E. You press, if you have this, you can press E and you extrude it. We grab the tool also, the extrude region, and just grab the plus sign and pull it down. We're going to pull this down. And, and one thing is, you might not be able to notice how far it's going down there. What can we do to see inside the chest box so it allows us to know where exactly we want to stop when we're pulling it down? Exactly, our x-ray. We're going to toggle our x-ray. Let's press our notepad so we can have a better view and then pull it down. And perfect, there we go. So now we reached the point we want to have for the chest. Now, I, we wanted it to be able to follow the curve, follow the, the, the chest itself. So as we have it, let's go and grab the select box. And let's go to our scale tool. There we go. Setting our scale tool, go back to the notepad one view and grab our eggs axis and just pull it a little bit inward so we have that line that follows the chest inside let's toggle this off and we're getting there we have our chest pretty nice so we have the lower part of the chest now let's work on the top part okay so the top part it's a uh, it's almost like a, a dome type. So we have multiple ways we can achieve this. Let's try one of the ways that we can do this. If we hold shift, press A, we can bring up a cylinder. There we go. Down here, when you bring up some of the shapes, you get an option. So if you click on this uh, menu down here, you're going to see different options. Right now, the vertices are the points. It has 32 vertices. And this is the radius, which is how uh, how kind of uh, wide it is. And the depth is how tall it is. But right now, what we want to do is click on the vertices. I want to lower this so it's not so heavy. 
let's do from 32, let's go to down to 18 vertices and you hit enter. And now you see that it has a lot less lines. That has a lot less vertices. So it's, it's a lot nicer to have. Uh, when you have a lot of vertices, it, it gets very heavy on game. So the least vertices you have, the better. You can see your vertices down here, 36 on overall shapes. And well, that's where we want to stay. We want to stay uh, the simplest possible. Okay, so we have our cylinder. Now let's... Okay, so here's one thing that happened. And it, it's very cool that it happened. That way I can show you guys um, how to deal with it. So when you are in edit mode, whatever you add... is going to be part of the whole object that you already had in object mode. If you switch back to layout, then you have your objects and you move. These are all together. When you switch back to modeling, they are separate because you are working inside the object. So what we want to do when this happens, and we want these guys to be separate for now, you want to go over and hover with your mouse over the shape that you want to separate and press the L key. That's going to select everything. If it does not select everything, you go down here to your uh, menu that popped up and press normal. So it should have selected the whole cylinder. And then we want to hit the P key. And you see when you press the P key, this menu comes up. It's called separate. That's what we want to do. We want to separate the selection. So click on selection. And now you can exit your object mode. And you can see they are separate. Now they're not longer together, which is what we want. That's perfect. Okay, so let's go back to our edit mode. And let's actually go back to object mode so we can select the cylinder edit mode perfect now let's grab out click our L key and press our G to move press our Y key to move it on the Y axis and align it with our chest perfect and we're gonna move it again let's use the move tool move it down on this axis we can have it centered now we're gonna rotate it so we want to rotate it going this way so what we're going to do is we're going to press the R for rotate and we're going to press the Y to make it rotate on this axis right here. And then we're going to press 90. So it's uh, even 90 degrees. Perfect. You see it's starting to take that kind of shape that we want. That's awesome. Now let's grab our scale tool. Press our one numpad one and scale this baby up. So it's, we want it to be on that same size right there. So it fits the chest. With our move tool, let's move it up. Here you go. Move it a little bit. Main side. So if you scroll with your scroll wheel, you can get closer and you'll be able to move shorter distances. Let's grab our scale tool and scale it a little bit. So sometimes when you are doing using your tools, you can't seem to get it right because it's moving too fast. What you want to do is you want to hold your shift and then you want you you want to press your scale and then you want to hold shift and that's going to make it move a lot slower. I'll give you more precise. Uh, the, it's going to be a lot more precise for you to be able to achieve the, 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 you know, where you want to actually have it. Perfect. Okay. So I believe we have it where we wanted to. Let's go to our numpad three so we can see it on the side, grab our move tool. And move it, grab it to move and press shift to move it slowly so we can achieve that 
perfection right there. So great. I think it looks great. So we got we got our chest right there. All right. So the next thing we want to do, we want to get rid of the lower part chest, right? We want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to press on the notepad the back diagonal slash. So the notepad slash is going to take us into this view where only the selected object is. If you press it again, you go back and you see all the objects. So whatever object you have selected, when you use your numpad slash, both you go into a local view where you only see the object that you have. This is very useful to do certain things when the other objects are overlapping or you have multiple things in the scene that you don't want to, uh, you know, have clock your viewport. Oh, well, let's press that right there. And what we're going to do is go to our frontal view to our total x-ray because we want to grab multiples of these and we're going to go ahead and get there we go perfect so if we go ahead and press the delete key we have a menu we want to delete the faces not the vertices not the edges just the faces and right now, that's perfect. What we did, we just deleted that. But you know what? I'm thinking that I would prefer to stay with the flat parts here. I think that would have been really cool to, to stay with the flat part. So let's control Z to undo. And let's toggle our X-ray and go here to our select tool. And let's press one for our vertices. Is where it, right now we're in faces. Let's select one of our vertices right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this vertices right here. And we are going to press the K key. When you press the K key, you're going to have this little knife. Knife is a slice tool. So you hover over that vertices that we selected. And it's going to, you know, it's going to have that red uh, outline. You're going to click on it, and then you want to extend it all the way to the other one. When you see it, it snaps onto the other vertices, you click on it and press enter. That's going to add an edge between it. It's going to cut it off right there. We want to do that on the other side as well. Let's press RK. Go all the way up. Press enter. Perfect. So now if we go to our notepad, press our X-ray, and go switch to our faces, when we do this, we select this lower bottom half. You see, it's selected and we still have this side of the face that is not selected. So when we press delete and faces, we have this flat area right here that we want to stay with. So let's press our slash on the notepad again, and we're back to our chest. Nice. Starting to take form, right? Let's go into our layout and let's see how that looks. We can grab it, move it around. That's very nice. So another thing I want to do is like since we gave the lower part of the treasure chest uh, a some depth, I want to do the same with the top part of the chest. So we're going to press the slash key to go into uh, local view. And now we're going to use one of the options on this side right here on the properties. We're going to go into modifier properties. That's a little wrench. Remember the spells on the first class we talked about these guys are, are like spells. We can throw some spells on these objects and, and it'll do so super cool stuff. So let's add one of those spells. And the spells we're going to add is called Solidify. Solidify, it's going to make an object have a thicker surface. You can see down there, and if you hover over it, it'll give you some instructions. I'll make the surface thick. So let's click on it. And you have some options that are going to pop up. And if you get closer, you're going to see that it already has a little bit of thickness you see that that's because of this modifier so here in the thickness 
and don't worry about the other ones. You, you'll be able to uh, learn more how to use all of these other. But right now, we're just going to up the thickness. Going to make it a little bit thicker. Actually, quite a lot thicker. So it kind of fits the theme. So I think that's nice. It's quite nice. And the other thing we want to do, I want to move my clamp all the way up. So a clamp means it's going to try to maintain the 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 edge flow of it and another thing we want to do is we we'll want to click this option right here it's called even thickness so even thickness as you can see it gets a little bit bigger it's because now all the sides are going to be symmetrical if i take, take this out they're not all that symmetrical so again even thickness make it more symmetrical right there and we have our chest um, top part it's pretty nice um so cool thing when you have the modifier like i said you can hide them with this little arrow right here you can turn them off um if we go into modeling press our uh, slash inside the modeling you see i can modify i can grab all these parts but if i want to grab a, a part of the inside i cannot grab any of it that's because it, this has not been applied. So this currently is still a spell that's happening on it. It's not applied. It is not part of the mesh yet. If you were to apply this, it, then you'll be able to select all the other faces and it will be permanent. Right now it's non-destructive. When you apply, you are performing a destructive action. An instructor action doesn't mean it's breaking. It just means that it no, it no longer is <clears throat> something that you can revert to by simply turning this on and off. Okay? So we have that. Let's just stay with it right now. It doesn't matter. You don't have to apply it currently. Let's click our uh, slash again and make sure our chest is where we want it to be. So now that we applied this solidified, we... we, we see that it's, it's a, it changed a little bit of the form. So let's fix that. Let's go to our non-path three. Press our A key. A is gonna select everything. Now path three here. And now let's try to grab our tool and kind of align it a, a little bit better. So I select it and hold shift so I can have precision. And there, now I think it looks really nice. All right, guys, great job. So it's a really good idea after uh, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour to get up. It's really important for you to get up. So I would encourage you right now to pause the video and go take a stroll, five, 10 minutes, go get some water, uh, you know, look at something else and then get back here it's really good so you don't spend a lot of time sitting down it's really good to get up it's good for your body and for your creativity as well all right so welcome back hope you have uh, a nice break let's continue here and now that we have our kind of our chest model out our basic shapes set up let's build opening so Right now, I want to go into my select box and I'm going to hold the control key and press R. Now, if I move my mouse closer to the mesh, I'm going to see this line right here. This line right here is edge slice tool. And we have a tool for that. If you press escape, you cancel that and then you you can see here it's called loop cut. We click on it and you'll be able to make cuts just like we did with the knife. But these are based on specific part of the chest. So if I go here and press this right here, you see I make different cuts. And that's pretty cool. It helps you segment parts that you want to do right away super fast. But let's control C back here and press and move back to our select box. 
So I want this to be symmetrical. I want what's happening on this side to happen on this side. And there's a very cool spell for that. The spell is called Mirror. So you can go and grab and click this right here. Boom. So it's called, it's called mirror. Uh, what we want to do, what you want to do is go to your preferences and let's find an add-on. Here on the search tool, let's type mirror. And you say it's, you got mesh auto mirror. So you want to select that one and you see it's going to be set up in the tab category of the, of edit. Press N to bring up your categories for your add-ons and search for your edit tab. It's gonna be right here. You won't have all of these here. You'll probably be able to see the edit. And in here, you'll see the auto mirror tool. Right now, we wanna mirror on the X. You see the X, it's the red. We wanna mirror on the X axis. And so it's gonna be positive. That means it's gonna move to the, uh, to the right side and just click auto mirror. And what happened is if he, he got caught in, in half, but there is a, a mimic that's happening on the other side. So if I grab this, you'll see it'll move together. Things will happen together. And this is very nice because it'll save you a lot of time and it'll give you symmetry, which is very, very good. So right now you want to maintain the use clip for now. That means that the center part where it meets it's going to stay clipped. It's going to stay together. It's going to have like a, like glue to it. Okay, perfect. So let's go and hit our N key again, hide that. And now that we have our uh, top part mirrored, I want to use my loop tool, loop cut tool, and kind of click on it and get that loop cut right there. Now, the other way we can do this, like I said, is you control you hold control and the R tool, and that will make your lap lap uh, your loop cut. Cool thing about the, using the shortcut is that when you use the shortcut and you click on it, you are able to choose where you wanna actually set up that cut. Whereas when using the lap the loop cut tool, you you click on it and it'll be a state all to get. Playing the leaks to fame. Hunt. Amy, put it on the. Come on. We've got sold. Yenba. Can you taste the good head? Went up fight the guys. We're best on up fight this evening. Yenba. You know the will eat it. It was a tool to program then. Stand. Good job. Okay, so when you're using the loop cut tool, you are not able to actually um click on it and move on it. It'll be set up right there when you when you where you select it, where you click initially. Okay, so I prefer to use the control R, click, and I can actually select where I want it. So I want to do there are those metallic edges. Just uh, move it, uh, say about here. Just gonna have that thickness there. And now what we're gonna do now is switch to our faces and grab the initial one right here. And we're gonna hold control click on the top one and that's going to select all the faces that are 
in the middle between the one you selected initially and the second one you click. You can try that. And sometimes you can all go all the way around. It's called control and click here and there you go. You selected all the faces all the way around. Now what we want to do is we want to extrude here. So let's grab our extrude. There we go, extrude tool, and let's pull that out. Let's pull it up a little bit. So we see that it's pretty cool, it's coming up, but we have this issue. It's like uh, th these parts all just went up. We need those to actually stay there and, and stay put. So there's multiple ways we can do that, but let's do it uh, with this tool right here. What we're going to do is use the scale tool and scale it out. So it's nice and thick. And then let's use the move tool and move it back down. So now we have the issue that the top part is not where it should be. So the other way I would have done this is that instead of using the tool, Let's use the shortcut. So in the shortcut, we can select P and it'll by default um, extrude like that. But if we, while we, we press the E key, we press the S for scale, we can scale it out. So I'll hold shift to be more precise. And there we go. These are happening because of our magic, uh, our, our, our little spell here. So that's something we can um, fix later on down the road. Um, you can turn it off for now and, and then we'll fix it down the road. For So we got it thick. Now, after we did that, we just need to pull it up a little bit. So it lay flat. Let's press our number three uh, key on the numpad and align that to be kind of flat. So when we do it on the lower part, it fits. Perfect. So now we have our round area here. It's looking pretty nifty. And let's go to our layout. And this happens, it means you need to press your slash again. So our select box, select our box down here. And let's move to modeling. Now we're going to work on the lower part down here. So let's control R, get our look cut here, press the mouse button, and let's scroll it all the way out here so it matches the top part. And if it doesn't match for any reason, you want to press the one on your notepad and see it doesn't match. So let's control Z and go back, control R to get a look. And let's make it match right now. Us uh, all right up about there. Really good. Okay, so there's another way you can make sure it matches is that if you double click on the G key, you can scroll the edges around. So if you hold your shift, you can move it more precise and get it right there on the edge. So remember, if you press double click on your G key, you can scroll and make sure you can move that line where you want it to. So now as you can see, we have that line right there, but we don't have it on this side. Now that's a problem because then I will have to do this again. So what can I do to mirror this to the other side? Got that right. Let's use the mirror spell. Let's click our N and use our add on. Let's click on auto mirror and voila. If we decide to grab this, we have our chest mirrored. Perfect. So, what we want to extrude here, we don't want to extrude the whole, the whole, all these parts out. We just want to grab these two. So not 
we work, let's not grab this one. Let's just grab this one and the back one. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude. You may see it's going to go vertical, but let's press the S key scale. But it's scaling like everywhere. So we can also press the Y key. So it only scales on the green line. And that way we can make sure it scales where we want it to. Now hold shift. So you can have be more precise and leave it there. And let's see if it's how we wanted it. So I would say it's, it's good. It's, it's a chest. It, it wouldn't be perfectly precise being a medieval chest. But the only the other thing I would have done is that let's go back to it a little bit. Let's press the hub on Drill Z and go to our numpad three. So we can actually be more precise and actually see where we want to stop. So let's hit our extrude key, our scale key, and then Press Y so we can only scale on the Y. And hold Shift so we can be more precise to it. Now, I think that's good. Perfect. So right now we have our chest coming up very nicely. I think it's pretty cool. Let's go back to layout. See how it looks. So you see those lines. You don't want to have those lines, so I'm assuming... Um, that's, that's because of these uh, shade flat, it's kind of material uh, default blender has. So you can right click on the object, you click the object, you right click on it, and then you can shade it smooth. And you're going to see it's going to have this weird looking uh, smooth <laughs> kind of plasticky feel. So you go down here on your properties, you see this triangle upside down triangle here, you click on that green uh, triangle tab and look for normals. Press your normals and then just click auto smooth and boom, it's nice. Do that for the lower part. Shade smooth, right? You already have your normals here, boom, out to smooth. Now it's looking pretty nifty, like it. Okay guys, so uh, what we're gonna do next I'm just going to do uh, this part right here. Okay. So for now, we're going to merge this, guys. We're going to uh, work on them together. For that, we're going to uh, wrap one, click one of them, hold shift, click the other one, and you have them both selected. If you press the G key, you can move them around. So what we're going to do is hold control and press the J key to join them. Now they are one, they are one object and we're going to use them as one object for now. Okay. So let's go to our modeling and let's make a look up. So control R click and let's move it. I think this nice thickness goes hover on the on lower part, click and let's do that right there. Seems to be a line. Cool. Go to our select. Select faces. And actually, let's make another loop cut. Because this part right here doesn't, you know, uh, go all the way down. So let's control R on the lower part. Click. And uh, I think that's pretty cool right, right there because it's not... Sad, let's put it here. You have the little putt there. Okay, so let's go back to our faces and grab these guys. And I want to grab this one as well. So grab, you know, that part right there. And we're going to duplicate this. What we're going to do is we're going to sh hold shift, press the D key, and we are duplicating this. You see it comes out. Okay, so now you can... Press your right mouse key to leave it there. You just deselected it. And if you press your G key, you can move it around still. But what we're going to do is, remember how we 
separated the object when we brought a new object into the edit mode. Exactly. So we're going to hit the P key to separate and so do selection. Now you see it turned orange. That means it's outside the object itself. Now let's go and till layout, click outside and click on this one in particular right there so we can grab it. And what we want to do now is go into modeling. We're going to select all the faces and we're going to press the E key to extrude. And we have that nice part right there. Okay. But you know what? It has like an arrow kind of look thing. So let's do that first before we extrude so we can make that um, in a simpler plane. So let's control Z. And now let's go into vertices. And if we grab one of these guys, we can move it around, but I feel like we need to have more of these guys to be able to make the arrow. So let's control R to make some loop cuts. Click one there. Then we can make another one here. Make another one here. And let's make a couple down here for the pointy part that we have there. Nice. Okay, so now we click on one of these vertices and let's press G and G for a second time and we can move it across the axis. Well, so we have that right there. Oh wait, but now we have like that it seems like it's duplicated. We have two vertices of the same spot. We can fix that by uh, setting up this option right here. It's auto merge vertices. So let's control C to go back to it. Click on it. Double G. Move it all the way in. Boom. Now we have one. Okay. So remember to only use this when you really want to merge your vertices. You don't want to leave it on. If you leave it on, a lot of things are going to get merged that you don't want them to be get merged. Okay. So it's very important that you only uh, enable this out of merge vertices when you are going to merge vertices that you need to. So let's turn that off. We have our, our, our kind of arrowy feel in there. So let's now move this and center. And I want to move this guy. Maybe kind of right there, but you know what? I feel like we need more space here. So let's go back and let's grab all of these guys. Or you can click, left mouse click, select and, and drag to grab them. Left mouse clicks and drag to drag them. That's why you have the select box. And then we double G press and move it inward. Move it a little bit inward right there. Perfect. Now I would do the same with these guys, just to move it a little bit in, although it's a little bit fatter on the bottom, but that's cool. And now let's, I believe we can merge this one down here just because the arrow is a little bit more pointier. So let's grab our merge vertices tool, click on the vertices, double G, boom. And we don't need this one here. So let's double G and move it down. Perfect. So now we want to move this out. So this is what's happening. When you see it's, it's when you move it down, it's, it's kind of moving inside the chest and you don't want that happening. And the way we can avoid this is by going up here into this magnet tool. Let's call the snap tool. If you click on it, you're going to see thing. It's going to snap. It's not going to move unless it has another spot it can uh, lay itself onto. 
but we got options here. So in this option, we have increments. So it's moving on a specific number of increments. We want to use it to move on the on volume. Or we can even use face. Face is the top of the chest. So let's scrap the face and let's use the closest. And these are good. And we should be able to move. And it's not going to go inside the chest so much as it would, it's as it was going before. But it is still going in there. Let's try another option. Let's try volume. Switch to volume. And let's see how it manages it. Doesn't manage it as well. So let's keep with face. Sounds like our winner. And let's try to move that, move it so it has that arrow right there. So another reason why it's not bending on this side, it's because we don't have enough vertices for it to bend. So if we control R, uh, sorry, so if we grab this one, let's grab the other vertices. By holding shift, you, just, you can drag and grab another vertices and let's control E. It's going to bring up another menu. This menu, you can do multiple things, but right now what we want to do is just use the subdivide. Subdivide is going to break it into uh, however many cuts you decide. So currently, I think we can do two more cuts and see if that actually helps it vent. So let's try that out. And as you can see, the loops are there. So it's bending better. It's not going inside. So let's press the numpad one. Hold shift for precision. Perfect. Now let's align this guy. Uh, press the G key. Hold. Grab the other one. Press the G key for precision. The shift. And there. We kind of have that arrow feel. These kind of too big. Let's pre grab this one. Double G. Move it inward. And grab this one. Double G. Move it up. Now, I will grab G on this one. Press G to grab it. But I'm going to use the X to just move it on the X axis. And do the same for this one. G and X. Move it on the x-axis, and there we go. That's looking pretty good. You can also press the the slash on the notepad, and you get that uh, alone, and then you can, you know, kind of polish it, grab it, make it uh, look better without having the chest in the middle. Um, so what I would do now, so we can maintain the edge flow, is that I would grab my knife click on this vertices and connect it here i would grab my knife here click on these vertices and connect it that way we actually have all the mesh and it, it, it's it's just nice to have all the vertices connected to, to another one let's go back with the check with the slash and now we can go to our faces press a to grab all and extrude. And if you notice that it's kind of snapping weirdly, that's because you, we still have our snap turn on. So let's turn it off and try again. Hit E for extrude. And let's extrude it out. And there we go. Perfect. So I didn't do this one. This are this is uh, uh, one of the easy ones. So let's just grab it and uh, let's use our X-ray. Go to our vertices, grab our vertices, and we have this turned on. Remember to turn it off when you're not going to use it. And double G to move it across the edge, and let's merge them down here. 
So I want to grab this and double G to move it a little bit up. I'm going to grab this and G and X so I can move it a little bit out. Turn this off. Turn X-ray off. Go to object mode. And there we go. That's looking pretty nifty. Great. Okay, so now remember we have these all together. We don't want it together because we want a way to be able to uh, animate it later on. So let's go into our modeling part. And if we have faces selected here and press the L key, it's going to select the top part. You can move that top part out. So what we want to do is what we did to separate. We press the key, we are correct, and selection. Now we have that separate and we can go to our layout and we have our two parts. And everything's turning out to be super awesome. Um, really like this a lot. Okay, so the other thing you want to do is now you see that this is this should have like a little bit indentation in there. So let's just grab this one and press the E key and move it inward a bit. And we're gonna do the same on this one. So let's go to our object, select the object, go to our edit mode or our modeling, grab this one and Extrude in. What happened here? So what happened here is that we already have faces. So the way we work with this one is that we can actually just move it a little bit inward. So let's do that right now. Let's go to our There we go. So select it and let's go to our um, slash so we can have this view only. Go to edit mode. And right now we would need a loop cut here so we would be able to move that inward. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this loop cut in the middle right here. I'm going to pull it out just a tad. This wouldn't need a lot of it. And let's see if we can actually pull this guy in now. We hit the extrude, press the X key, and let's move it here. So now we have these edges are extra. We don't need them. So what we're going to do, we're just going to grab them. Press X or delete and get rid of them. And there we go. So you see here we have overlap. We don't want that. And we have also a little bit of a missing edge right here. So what we want to do is we're going to do a move to vertices again. And this is... Uh, one of the cool things that you want to keep in mind when uh, you're fixing mesh, and it'll happen, you're going to want to fix mesh, let's press N to get rid of this, is that you want to merge sometimes some parts. So what you want to do, let's go to the edge first. You see that it's overlapping there, we need to fix that. The way we do that is that we're going to grab this, this, and we're going to press M, and we're going to merge it. But you know what? We don't want to merge it in the center. Let's go Control Z. Now, you see they are both yellow. We want to grab one, and when you, when you have one selected, it's white. When you have two select like this, and uh, when you select them both at the same time, they'll both be selected, but none of them are selected uh, in priority 
in with the other. So what we want to do is we want to select one, hold shift, and select the other one. And when it's white, that's the priority one. When we press the M key to merge, then we have other options. So if we select last, it's going to merge to the last one or to the, the one that you selected that has priority. Let's do that with this one. Click this one, merge last. Perfect. So now we have that where it has to be. And we can get rid of these. So we select them holding shift, double G, and move it in. Oh, wait, something's missing. What are we missing? Exactly. We need to so put our select or your our merge vertices uh, toggle on. Double G and merge. Turn it off. Now we have that kind of cool inside part. So down here, as you can see, we are missing some faces. That's, that's real cool. That's happening. Let's go into our edit mode again. And now we're going to close these guys out. So click your edge. Select all the edges. We're going to press F to fill. And that's that. You press F and you feel holes when you have all the edges selected. Nice. So let's press R slash to go back out. Now we have this extra face here we want to fix. Let's grab our top chest. And then let's go into edit mode. And let's grab that face right there. Let's get rid of it. There. Slash. And now we have pretty nifty detailed chess happening here. It's really cool. All right, guys. So next, we're going to add some of those vivid details. And then we're going to add um, the lock area. So let's start with the rivet details. And what we're going to do is we're going to deselect an object load. We select everything called A or just click outside. Shift A. And we are going to grab a cylinder. So our cylinder currently has 18 vertices. I would lower this maybe to 10. So it's uh, a lot lighter and let's lower the depth to 0.5, the radius to 0.2, maybe lower. Let's do 0.1 or 0.15. Yeah, I think that's nice. And now let's do 0.1. That seems nice. If you press the dot key next to zero on your notepad key that's going to a notepad here that's gonna zoom in on the object you have selected and it's gonna rotate around it's pretty cool um so you can move across the scene with different objects so i think this is uh looks good good size so let's grab it press g y to move forward press one Now let's toggle our X-ray. Now let's click R to rotate, X to rotate on the X, and 90. Now, now that I see it, I think it's a little bit bigger than we need it to be. So if we uh, click the S key to scale it down just a tad, we can press G to move it. I think that right there might be a good size. So let's press G, move it forward with the Y. Let's get out of this mode so we can see it better. 
and press G to move it around just a tad. Press numbered brat three to align it. See, it's it's flat on this side. It has this cursor. So R for rotate, X to rotate on the X, and just slant it a little bit there. Boom. Perfect. Let's press G to move it up a tad. Press 1 to align it. So now we're going to duplicate this and make a couple of them all across the line. So we're going to hold shift, duplicate, and move. Let's move it. Let's leave two, like those two extra blocks are in the middle. Let's just leave them there. Hold shift to be more precise. Perfect. Press 1 in the numpad. You're going straight down. So you need to press G to align it. So it takes a curve on the side also. Press 3 to duplicate. Leave those two right there. Press 1. Let's align it. Press 3. Let's duplicate what should be again. Let's put this one right here. Press 1. To align it. I think this one can move down a little bit. It's press G just to move it a tad down. This one also just a tad down. And I'll line this one a little bit to the side. There we go. I think that's nice. Very cool. Okay. So uh, we see that we have uh, now a bunch of these guys. And we don't have none on this side. And none on the back. So what we could do is is first I'm going to press 1, duplicate once more, and move 1 all the way up so I can keep it for the top part. Okay? But now we're going to click and select, shift, click to select, shift, click to select, shift, click to select, and control J to join. Now they're all joined, they're all one object. So what we can do now is we can go into our... Press N to bring out your menu and go to your edit and auto mirror. And we have X selected. But we can also select others. So right now let's do auto mirror on the X. And what this happened, and it's it's actually correct. And it's a very good opportunity to understand position in the 3D space. So let's control Z. It doesn't go out. Control Z again. So everything that you click has a little uh, yellow dot. Everything has a little yellow dot on it. That's the center of the object. That's where the center of the object is in, in, in reference to the world. Now uh, for outer mirror to work or mirroring to work, you need to have the center in the center of the world. For to do that, we grab our object. And we are going to hold control and press the A key. That's going to uh, bring up the apply menu. And the apply, you want to apply all transforms. That's going to bring the yellow dot to the center of the world. If you press 1, you're going to see the yellow dot now is on the center. And when yeah, you do auto mirror, it mirrors perfectly to the other side. You remember, to mirror, you need to have a center. And it's going to mirror right on the center. So if you, your center is here, it's going to mirror right there next to it. Okay, so you have your spell. You go to your wrench. You have your spell set up, which is the mirror that we did here. It applies the spell. We can also apply it on other axes. If we press the Y axis, it's going to apply it on the back part as well. And just like that, we populate it with the rivets all around the object. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, so remember, control, save. It's going to bring up your window. I'll make a new folder. 
it's gonna be called 3D Toil. And stylized chest. So I would tell you that I wronged and I did not make a save file initially. I did not save constantly. That is something that we should um, always do. We should always hit control and save. You can see it says save to style at chest. Control save, control save. That you want to do that often. Okay, so now let's go to our chest here. Grab our remit. Press our G key, move it in place right there. Press our dot on the numpad, the period key, so we can zoom in on it. And then let's rotate it. Move it in, and then let's rotate it a bit. Perfect. So I want it to align with that, with the, the flat part. So I'm, and we're gonna do that all across. So let's duplicate with Shift D. Move the yellow dot on the center, rotate until it's aligned. Let's duplicate the yellow dot on the center. Let's rotate until it's aligned. Let's duplicate and move the yellow dot on the center. Rotate until it's aligned right there. And I hold shift for precision, just so you remember. We're gonna now. I'm going to grab this guy and set him on the center right here. And rotate so it's aligned. Now I want to do the same. I don't want to be duplicating them. Uh, let me make sure these guys are all aligned how I want them to. They could be a little bit more aligned. This one could be a little bit more inside. Perfect. Okay, so now let's grab all of these with shift holding shift and you can select them control j to merge them and if we mirror it's not gonna work remember we need to set the center to the center of the screen so control a all transforms and now we can freely outer mirror we have it on this side and if we press y we'll have it on the back part and that's awesome. And this one right here, we need to, we want to have them right there. So let's go ahead and control J on the other object. Okay. So you join it and it'll just populate it on that side. And just like that, we have all our rivets set up that we want it. Control save and just looking pretty nifty right now. Okay. Awesome sauce. All right. So I want to do something here. You see, this is separate. It's what we want it. We want this to be separate because that part is going to move up. So what I want to do is I want to press L and grab this. I press P to separate it. If you press tab, you can move back and forth from edit to object mode. Okay. Or you can just go here. I did this because this part must stay with the top part. So now we want to grab this and select this and control J to join up. Now top part has it, lower part doesn't have it. So now we want to grab this one, control and shift click to select the lower part, control J and lower part has it. Perfect. Now we want to grab all these guys and we want to apply the mirror. Let's apply that. Now, if we can select, we can select all the parts and something happened here that we want to fix. So when we mirrored, it mirrored all across. When we joined this one, it mirrored all across. So we want to uh, just go here and press L. And we can just press the V 
faces, get rid of that, and then go here and press L. Make sure you have it by pressing G to move it, and then press delete, faces, and we got rid of it. Small prowl. Okay, so we tab out. Select that. Select top bar, control J. And now it's all part of it. Select this one. Select the top part, control J. And all, now it's all part of it. So one thing we must do, we should try to do, remember, is to apply the mirror. Because if I do this right now, I did not apply the mirror, we're going to lose the back part. Just because this one doesn't have the mirror set up. So let's control Z back. Now we have them back. And make sure you apply the mirror. And then you shift click and join. And they'll stay there. Fate. All right, on. So it's looking pretty nifty. Got our chest coming up. Now, what we need to do is create these part right here. So that's going to be shift A to make a cylinder. And let's make this one bigger. Right there, I believe that's kind of cool. And actually, let's make the radius smaller. There. So let's bring this guy G, Y, move it front. G, X to move it on the side. Press one on the notepad to have our view set up and just G, Z to move it up. Perfect. Press three to move on the other to the side view. Press G, Y to move back. Press G. I think that's right there. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now if we, we wanna rotate it, right? So let's press G, Y, and that's moving it. We want to press R and Y and rotate it. So we want to rotate it 90, press 90, type 90 degrees. So it's perfectly rotated. Okay, so I'll press G, move it back a little bit right there. And one thing that I kind of, you know, noticing right now, let's Z and Z to move it down, is that this part right here actually should belong to this part. So this part needs to flip open, right? So let's actually click one of these islands or faces and press L and press P after selecting it to get rid of it and, and select it out. Press tab to go out and now this part it's out. And we want this part to be um part of this cylinder right here but before we do that i want to smooth out the cylinder right click smooth go to the triangles normals auto smooth there we go and now we're going to be able to just have this part flip open with the chest part right there. Okay, so now let's leave it at that right now, like that for now. This uh, object mode, click outside to exit, shift A, and let's move to a curve. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to create, um, let's do a circle. Let's grab a circle right here, and that's gonna pop up right back here, G, Y to move it forward, G, X to move it on the side, S to scale down. Now press 3, press G, Y, move it right there, press G, Z to move it up, and now let's see if we are where we want it to be. So that has to be kind of down here, so G, Z, Z to move it down, press 1 to align, G, X, true, move it on the X axis and center it, and now we're going to press R for rotate, Y to rotate on the Y axis and, and type a 90 
to rotate 90 degrees. And we have it right there, kind of aligned in the middle. It's pretty cool. So what we want to do now is, right here on your options, you have a different options for curves. You see, you don't have the triangle. You have the Bezier curve. And what we want to do is, we want to, here in the resolution, we want to type to maybe 5. And the next thing we want to do, we're going to want to go down to geometry, scroll down to bevel, and you want to start adding that. And that what's going to do is give it more mesh. So type that until you feel it's, it's a good number. It seems 0.3 is a good number. Cool. So right now we have that right there. That should fit a lock. So now um, you see it's still quite smooth. I would say we can lower it a little bit more. Maybe I think three is good. The lowest, this is a, a polygon count. So the lowest polygon count, the better. So far chest is around 1,843 vertices and that's okay okay we can lower that later on but for a nice chest that it's uh, high quality it's a good all right cool stuff so we have our lock ring and right now if you hit tab you'll be able to actually have the options to move these uh, kind of lines these are called called bezier curves uh and you can modify this and it's pretty nifty and it's not mesh yet you can make different things happen with it but in this case we're just gonna leave that right there we need that uh, to be that round so go back to object mode and what we want to do is we want to right click on it and we want to hit this object contact we want to hit it and convert it to mesh now when we hit tab it's mesh you see that now you can select the faces and interact with it good okay so remember we had that problem where we had our, our solidify give, give giving us an issue the only thing you need to do is to actually just lower, hit this key here is to move it out. Because, well, the computer needs to understand that the mirror comes first. And then after the mirror is done, after it's mirrored, then whatever is mirrored, it's going to have the solidify spell on it. So, we, now we can see inside of it and it looks fairly nice. Okay, so we have our chest almost ready. I think we need a little bit of those rivets there. Let's do those two. And we can call this chest our first surface project done. So what we can do is we can click on this tab, go tab it into edit mode and press L key on one of these rivets. You can see we get normal. And actually, now that I notice, we have, we kind of have duplicates here. So let's fix that. Let's just L key on all of these. L key on all these and make sure when they move, they are duplicates. Perfect. So now let's press the delete key on the new faces. Great. So now these are the duplicates right here. So let's go out to object mode. Let's go to mirror and apply our mirror. Perfect. Now we have just one of them. So just grab whichever you prefer. I'm going to grab this one because it's uh, already aligned to it. Just going to shift D to duplicate. Press X to move around the X axis. 
Press one on the notepad, change our view. G to move, move it here in line, S to scale it down a little bit. And let's press three. And let's press X-ray, because we want to make sure it is it's right there where it needs to be. Now let's get out of X-ray, still not there, but it's G, and move it back a bit. Let's shift D to duplicate, and Z to move it up. G and Y to move it back. R to rotate, X to rotate on the X. G and Y to move it back. G and Z to move it a little bit in. And we have our rivets where they should be. Super cool stuff. All right, now this is looking very nice. Okay, guys, so now we basically have the chest ready. I suggest you take another break before you continue. And what we're going to do next is we're going to set up some seams and get it ready for texture.